What's up, guys? Greg Elba here. Hi, John Humphrey, first mate of the, <laughs> the real <laughs> rejects ship. <laughs> voice <laughs> makes me cough. We're going to review, uh, continue our retro movie review series on Stranger Tides, Pirates of the Caribbean. Yeah. Just keep, do just keep doing that this whole video. Uh, just keep doing that. You coughing during my intro? <laughs> um, Pirates of the Caribbean, Stranger Tides. Guess what? Johnny Depp's back. You know who else is back? Gibbs. You know who else is back? Not a lot of other people. Barbosi. Barbizi is in the heezy. Okay. This would be the third time I'm watching this movie. Oh, boy. Third time I'm watching it. Uh, first two times I saw it, I did not watch it right after watching Pirates 3. Okay. And I think that's what made me... And I, and I think Part 4 is generally perceived as the worst of them all. And I don't blame people for saying that. Part 4 or Part 3? Part 4. I believe. I, I get why. Yeah. I totally and, get um, why. And watching it back to back from World's End to this, I gotta say, I... Definitely, because I hated it the first two times I saw it. Watching it this time, I was like, I enjoy this more than part three. Because okay. it's at least trying to have fun. And okay. Now, granted, that doesn't mean I don't notice all the problems with this movie. <laughs> yeah, right. yeah, I think I'll meet you in the in, in a weird middle grade. Because it was weird watching these both for the first time back to back. Like, uh, yeah, I think it's just way easier to enjoy than part three. Definitely. Yeah. I, I feel like part four is, is a lot more lean and a lot more enjoyable. However, I think it's a lot more soulless. Oh, totally. Like it, it's it's totally. Three still, like, as much of a mess and as chaotic and as, as lumpy as three is, it still has a soul. Like, and, and, everyone's and it, still trying. And it's a necessary chapter. Yeah. This feels like <laughs> franchise. <laughs> <The> extended <laughs> adventure. Yeah, let's make a part four with... All Jack this time. <laughs> Which adventure wasn't perhaps worthy of a whole film yeah. franchise? Yeah, it's it's just all Jack, all Jack, all Jack. Yeah, and let's take the thing that worked well in moderation and make it the focus. Yeah, I mean, from beginning, I remember the my my biggest complaints came from watching it in the first thirty minutes. I kept pointing out like, there's no, there's really no specific style to the way this film is captured. It has no real substance behind yeah. the camera. Like, Gore Verbinski had a very signature touch to all three Pirates films. They're all shot differently, but they all have a specific... The, the word is flair. There's flavor. They have a visual timbre. Yeah. It's like everything is huge. All the shots look like paintings. And he really yeah. took the time to make sure that you were really seeing and drinking in the sets and the costumes yeah. and everything. It the, made the world feel huge and feel real. The, you know? the world here doesn't... It, it, it feels more... What I said halfway through... And then I ended up finding out this was true <laughs> after the movie was done. I said, this feels like when you have a school book fair and then you find a Pirates of the Caribbean book <laughs> inspired by the movie. And they yeah. like, the adventures of Jack you Sparrow did. live on. <laughs> yeah. You did say, like partway through. And that was a tremendous call because apparently in, in, this is it's, based, it's on based, on, based on a book called, I think it's based on a book called On Stranger Tides. That is about finding the founder of youth. Okay. And, and it feels exactly like that. Sort of feels like a made for TV it does. Well, well I'm, I'm rude. It you sort of feels that. like a made-for-TV rude Disney original film. Oh, yeah. yeah. I mean, the first, for, off the bat, like, it, just the look of every, it's lit differently, it's shot differently, like, they don't take advantage of much of any of the sets, everything is CGI practically. Well, when you say like, differently, it's it's more than just different, it's lackluster. Yeah, it's like, like the colors are washed out, and yeah. the framing isn't inspired, and, like, there are times where, especially in some of those, like, boat scenes, I'm like... That's a big yeah. floodlight. You guys are on a soundstage. <laughs> yeah, we're supposed to like the first three felt very composed. It felt like they were storyboarded. Yeah. Here, yeah. a lot of the time, like like you said it best. You're like, there's something kind of cool to making it feel more like you're semi real time with these guys, more just like yeah, the reality like of the pirate world in the room, kind of. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Because like the shots kind of go on. It really looks like okay, where are we filming today? All right, let's get it. Let's get coverage here. Let's get coverage here. Yeah. What? Yeah. Let's do the shot. Close up on him. Close up on him. Master shot here. <laughs> like that's <laughs> how a lot. There's no specific style to the way any of it is done. And uh, Johnny Depp, the first few <laughs> couple times I saw, I thought he was just bored. Uh, he's, he looks pretty bored in the first like half hour of this film. Yeah, he does. This time around, it just seems like uh, he's just showing up on set doing his you know Jack Sparrow thing and then calling it a day. <laughs> like, yeah. Because. The, what, the biggest issue with this film is there's no emotional stakes. 
Yeah, there's all... no emotional. Stake. There's no real emotional motivation. Well, like, there's there's hardly stakes for anything because like the the laws of physics and the laws of common sense just don't apply anymore to Jack Sparrow. Yeah. Like Jack Sparrow doesn't even look worried by any of the situations no, no. he's in. No, no, it's yeah, he's he's not. But in terms of just everyone in the film, like yeah. the, the the only people they gave actual character motivation to was. Uh, Penelope Cruz and uh, the Blackbeard, uh, Ian, Sh- Ian McShane. And even their story could have been more engaging. No. Like, no, like they had plot elements that I thought if they honed in on those better, it would have worked. Totally. Like Penelope Cruz and Jack Sparrow finding out an hour and a half into the film that, oh, Jack kind of loved her at one point. Like, why don't you just kind of like introduce that element a little stronger and have that be a, a more crucial element so that way I could have felt, oh, this is what why Jack's on this mission. This is why Jack's <laughs> doing this, why he's so involved. Here it was kind of like, oh, Jack's just part of another adventure that he just didn't really sign up for. <laughs> he's kind of like Mad Max. Like, I know the third one, I know it starts off with he's looking for the Fountain of Youth, but like I said, there's no real emotional motivation for Jack involved in this. And if you're going to make him the primary focus of the film, the primary central character of it, where you get way more Jack time in the film... You gotta, you gotta enhance that a little. You, you gotta th- enhance it. <laughs> yeah. It seems weird to make it a story about Jack not looking for a boat or crew, finding out that somebody's impersonating him and getting involved. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> like, yeah. That's yeah. an odd setup for like a Jack Sparrow tale. You know, I, I feel like you could have gone with something stronger. And that's the thing about this whole movie uh, in the script. Uh, I, I, whereas part three. Felt like it was a thick draft. It was like probably draft number twelve, and they could have used a few more drafts. I felt like this was like draft number two, yeah. And they could have used a bunch more because nothing. There's hardly even any interesting dialogue in this movie. Like no, half the no, time no. they're just talking about the plot. You no, know? the movie's never intense, and the movie's never exciting. But I, I got, but I gotta say, third time around, I was like, I find this much more enjoyable than part three, and that's the only saving grace for me in this film is the comparison game. As a standalone film, I think that's why I hated it both times. Uh It's been years since I saw Part 3. So just watching it as its own thing, I'm like, man, this is terrible. This is lackluster. Um, There's there's a strong lack of passion involved in the filmmaking here. Yeah. And, uh, and, and, but there's sequences I like. I like the whole mermaid stuff. I do. I, I personally enjoyed the, like, the one mermaid sequence where they all turn scary and shit. That's like cool. I like that, and I, and I laughed a lot more in this than the third one. Definitely, there's mm-hmm. there's a lot more jokes to be had that actually hit. Blackbeard's cool a pun introduction. He kind of be, he becomes lackluster as the film continues he's, to go on. He's kind of the calypso of this movie. He's like, oh, you're building it up, and so, yeah, okay, yeah, <laughs> yeah, 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 all right, <laughs> yeah. Um, but no, the film's the film's rather forgettable, honestly. And, well, because be- there's no stakes. That's the thing. There's no stakes. <laughs> yeah. yeah, there's no stakes. And there's no in, uh, there's no tense. Uh, there's no suspense. Yeah. Like there's no one seems that engaged by anything that's going on, and it's a great adventure for them. Like traveling to the Fountain of Youth is a very Pirates of the Caribbean thing to do, and uh, yeah, I. It's weird. As as much of a mess as the third movie is, it left much more of an impression on me because the fourth one just becomes a blockbuster. It just becomes a Hollywood movie. Kind of like the oh, fourth yeah. one to me was like going from watching Lord of the Rings to to watching The Hobbit, where I'm like, wait a minute, all this stuff you used to do with real stuff for the most part, like the first three, even though the third one's bloated with CG more than the other two, it still feels like they animated what they had to. And in this movie, it feels like they animated just most things. Well, yeah. And the mermaid, like the mermaid sequence, I thought that was really cool. But I found myself missing Gore Verbinski that whole time. Going, we could have seen something even this cooler. This whole you know? script would have been better if Verbinski did it. <laughs> totally, <laughs> this totally. whole film from beginning to end would have been a million times more intriguing like, if Verbinski did it. Rob Marshall brought like no flavor. There's to no this. flavor. There's <laughs> no style. It's 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 captured in the in the simplest way you could capture a pirate's film. Yeah, it's, it's captured like, like a made-for-TV movie inspired yeah. by a children's book. <laughs> like it is. It's like if Pirates Three is this bloated hoagie with too many kinds of sauce on it. Pirates Four is just two pieces of bread and like a slice of lunch meat. Like it's a competent sandwich, but yeah. it just doesn't. I don't. It's weird. I think it's a, a better assembled movie than the third one. And I don't know if I would want to watch the third one again. But I also don't know if I would want to watch the fourth one again because yeah. the fourth one doesn't on so no. many levels. I mean, even when, like, they have the whole, 
Even when they get to the Fountain of Youth and, and all this stuff starts happening, I just feel Ooh, like there were, there were like... elements there that sound cool on paper that are technically old Fountain of Youth, Scary Mermaids. Um, yeah. Even uh, voodoo stuff would have been cooler if it more enhanced, you know? But they, they I felt like they really dialed it back. I felt like there was someone at the studio that was saying, you know, the third one got a little too dark and a little too mystical, so let's just let's only have like sporadic <laughs> moments of it here because we don't want to hone in on it too much. It didn't work. Let's just add up the humor. There were a couple things I liked about this. I, I liked this better than the third one in the sense that I thought it expanded the world more. It brought in some new characters. It went some new places. We got to see some different scenery. And I I actually liked the thing between the mermaid girl and the cleric. Yeah. I thought that was a cool character. I wanted to see more of him because he was... Those were the two characters in the movie that looked truly engaged and like they showed up to be. They seemed like they cared that they were in a pirates movie. Yeah, and and yeah. and I. And Barbosa does a good job. Jeffrey Rush does a good job. Yeah, he's yeah. always good, even if his material isn't yeah. great. You know. And there's some there's some good laugh out loud moments I think to be had. I, I really do think there was a couple of moments where I really like Jack made me laugh. Like, not all the time. I feel like most jokes fail, but I feel like there was a couple of a few good times where I'm like I laugh pretty hard at that. There are more jokey jokes. But yeah, like when the jokes are good, they're still good. You know? Yeah, they're yeah. still fun, and they're still Jack's mannerisms. And all yeah, that, yeah. Know? But uh, I don't know. I, I prefer it over the third one, but that's really not saying much, especially if you see how I felt about the third one. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> to be honest, I don't. I, honestly, I think I prefer the third one just because it comes I down. Think to, most people do. It comes down to the soul for me, and like this movie just traded in soul. For... Yeah, this movie lacks soul, but I feel like it, it's still more enjoyable. It's in more a, consistent. In a weird way. It's, it's still it's still more fun for me to watch. It has a real pace. It's more consistent. And it's not angsty and dour. Yeah. <laughs> you know? All right. Well, yeah. I would give it a half, a half a Greggy. <laughs> I'll give it a, a quarter of a John. Well, there you go, guys. <laughs> I think it's okay. There you go. That's my it's consensus. It's I think fine. it's okay to bad <laughs> somewhere there. It's kind of trite. Sure. Subscribe to The Real Rejects. Check out John at Dad John Humphrey on Twitter and Instagram. Social media manager at Blumhouse.com. Click that notification bell on our way to watch Pirates 5. Keep a lookout.